So, ChatGPT, uh, Kali and I are recording an episode of The Aspiring Solopreneur, and we would like to ask you some questions about solopreneurship and get your opinion. Is that okay with you? Absolutely. I'd be happy to help. What questions do you have in mind about solopreneurship? Well, what would you say is the most important thing a person thinking about becoming a solopreneur should consider? The most important thing to consider is your motivation and purpose. Understanding why you want to become a solopreneur will help guide your decisions and keep you focused. It's crucial to align your business with your personal goals and lifestyle preferences, ensuring that your venture not only brings financial rewards, but also personal satisfaction and balance. So I I do agree with that. I think, I mean, that's kind of our whole message is you become a solopreneur, not to be a gazillionaire, but to kind of like match it with your lifestyle. I think though the other thing solopreneurs need to think about from the beginning is just the feasibility of it and uh, and making sure it's viable product or service and um, kind of checking all the business boxes. I, I don't think it's enough to just follow your passion. I think you need to make sure it makes sense logistically as well as a way to create a livelihood that matches your lifestyle. Absolutely, you're spot on. It's essential to balance passion with practicality. Ensuring your idea is viable and meets a market need is crucial. This means conducting market research, understanding your target audience, and having a clear business plan. It's about finding that sweet spot where your passion intersects with a real opportunity, allowing you to build a sustainable and fulfilling business. So what would you recommend people do to avoid a situation where they start a business that really can't be a solo business when they want to be a solopreneur? What kinds of factors should they consider to avoid making that mistake? To avoid starting a business that isn't suited for a solopreneur, people should consider a few key factors. First, evaluate the scalability and complexity of the business. Ensure that the core operations can be managed by one person without needing a large team. Second, assess the demand for your product or service. Choose a niche where you can leverage your strengths and expertise efficiently. Third, consider the financial requirements. Ensure that the initial investment and ongoing costs are manageable for one person. Finally, think about the operational workload. Opt for a business model that allows for flexibility and doesn't demand more time and resources than you can realistically provide as a solo operator. Balancing these factors can help ensure that the business aligns with the solopreneur lifestyle. So I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with ChatGPT on this. Um, the one thing I would say is when she was saying, um, like make sure the core operations can run off of like it can be done for one person and and that you can scale with one person. Um, I just want to remind our listeners that we if you want to expand or you have uh, tasks that aren't just for one person. There's no harm in hiring other contractors. We actually highly recommend that. So if you think that the accounting is too much for you or the marketing is too much, we really recommend um, just partnering with other contractors on that. Um, that just don't add other employees. That's kind of our definition of a, a one-person business. So I, I would agree with her with the caveat that you can uh, go above the one-person um, task list, but you would just hire contractors for it. That's a great point, Carly. Leveraging contractors is a smart way to handle tasks that are outside your expertise or that are too time consuming without compromising your solopreneur status. By collaborating with other skilled professionals, you can focus on the core aspects of your business while ensuring other important functions are well managed. It's all about creating a support system that helps you maintain your independence while scaling effectively. Do you have any particular tools that you recommend using uh, as a solopreneur? As a solopreneur, having the right tools can make a huge difference in efficiency and productivity. Here are some recommendations. One, project management. Tools like Trello or Asana can help you stay organized and keep track of your tasks and deadlines. Two, communication. Slack or Microsoft Teams are great for communicating with contractors and collaborators. Three, accounting. QuickBooks or FreshBooks can simplify managing your finances and invoicing. Four, marketing. MailChimp or HubSpot are excellent for email marketing and managing customer relationships. Five, productivity. Tools like Todoist or Evernote can help you manage your daily tasks and notes effectively. Six, collaboration. 
Google Workspace or Microsoft 365 provide a suite of tools for document creation, storage, and collaboration. These tools can help streamline your operations and free up time to focus on growing your business. It's a lot of tools, and I'm going to take issue, especially with one, which is Slack. Don't you think that Slack is an awfully noisy uh, uh, conduit for information flow, uh, especially for a solopreneur that's trying to get get all the work done themselves? Uh, and those constant interruptions can lead to a really um, productivity inhibiting uh, set of uh, you know interruptions. Do, do you think I have any uh, valid point there? You make a valid point. Slack can indeed be noisy and distracting, especially for a solopreneur who needs to maintain focus. The key is to manage notifications effectively. However, for solopreneurs, it might be better to use tools that minimize interruptions. Alternatives like email or project management tools with messaging capabilities can provide a more controlled environment. It's all about finding the right balance that keeps you connected without compromising your productivity. So, Joe, I want to chime in with a, a question for her. So you're saying that it's all about, uh, or ChatGPT is saying that it's all about keeping connected. And I think one hard thing with solopreneurs is that isolation feeling. Um, so I'm curious, ChatGPT, what prompts you get the most as it relates to solopreneurship so that we can see that people aren't alone when they're asking questions about running a one-person business? So what prompts do you get the most as it relates to solopreneurship? That's a great question, Joe. Many solopreneurs ask about time management and productivity strategies as they often juggle multiple roles. Another common topic is finding and retaining clients as marketing and networking can be challenging for one-person businesses. Questions about balancing work and personal life also come up frequently as maintaining that balance is crucial for long-term success. Additionally, Many solopreneurs seek advice on using technology and tools effectively to streamline their operations. These questions reflect the shared challenges and experiences of solopreneurs, highlighting that they are not alone in their journey. So I agree that lead generation is a huge thing for solopreneurs. Um, but I'm curious, a lot of times when people go to get marketing advice, they hear about search engine optimization or marketing campaigns and, and all these big picture ideas. But when you're a solopreneur, you don't necessarily need to do that stuff. You maybe some people just need like three or four clients. Um, so what advice would you give to solopreneurs for lead generation that is specific to point. solopreneurship? For solopreneurs, especially those who only need a few clients to succeed, focusing on personalized and direct approaches can be more effective. Here are a few strategies. One, networking. Attend local events, join professional groups, and leverage platforms like LinkedIn to connect with potential clients and partners. Two, referrals. Encourage satisfied clients to refer others. Offering incentives for referrals can help. Three, local SEO. Optimize your online presence for local searches. Ensure your business is listed on Google My Business and other local directories. Four, content marketing. Share valuable content related to your expertise on social media, blogs or community forums to establish yourself as an authority. Five, direct outreach. Reach out to potential clients directly through personalized emails or messages, explaining how you can meet their specific needs. These strategies can be more manageable and impactful for solopreneurs without needing large scale marketing campaigns. So Joe, that's actually, that's an interesting point because I have said that I don't know if SEO is number one for marketing for solopreneurs. Um, just because of the, um, it takes a while to gain traction. It's a marathon, not a sprint. However, I do agree with ChatGPT on local SEO. If you're a local business, you want that Google listing. You want like that. That is a whole separate thing. So I 100% agree. If you are a local business and are only attracting local clients, local SEO is a must. General SEO is what I usually talk about when I think that that doesn't necessarily need to be number one for solopreneurs who just need a few clients. That makes a lot of sense, Carly. Local SEO is definitely crucial for solopreneurs focusing on a specific geographic area as it helps them stand out to nearby potential clients. General SEO, on the other hand, can be a longer term investment that may not be as immediately impactful for those who only need a handful of clients. By optimizing for local searches, solopreneurs can more quickly and effectively connect with the right audience in their area. 
So I'm curious, ChatGPT, do you have any recommendations um, for um, AI products for solopreneurs? Absolutely. There are several AI tools that can be incredibly beneficial for solopreneurs. Here are a few recommendations. One, Jasper, formerly Jarvis, great for generating content, whether it's blog posts, social media updates, or email campaigns. Two, Grammarly, an essential tool for proofreading and enhancing your writing, ensuring everything you produce is polished and professional. Three, Zapier, helps automate workflows by connecting different apps and services, saving time on repetitive tasks. Four, Calendly, simplifies scheduling by allowing clients to book appointments based on your availability, reducing back and forth emails. Five, Hootsuite, manages social media accounts by scheduling posts and analyzing performance helping you maintain a consistent online presence. Six, QuickBooks Self-Employed, uses AI to help manage finances, track expenses, and prepare for taxes. Seven, chatbots. Tools like Minichat can automate customer interactions on your website, providing instant responses to common queries. These AI tools can streamline various aspects of running a solo business, enhancing productivity and efficiency. So I'm you know, curious, I've used Grammarly, I use it now, but I found that I think they've been integrating AI and it's starting to get, it's starting to change the meaning of the things that I'm writing. And I'm finding it to be very, very frustrating that before it just corrected my grammar, now it's trying to correct what I'm saying and changing the meaning. And I'm wondering if uh, you have any insights into to that and you know what we can do about that. I understand your frustration with Grammarly's changes. As AI tools evolve, they sometimes try to do more than intended which can be frustrating. To manage this, you can adjust the settings in Grammarly. You can choose to focus on specific types of suggestions like grammar or spelling and disable style or clarity suggestions. This way, you can maintain control over the meaning of your text while still benefiting from basic grammar corrections. If this doesn't fully resolve the issue, you might consider using a more traditional grammar checker or manually reviewing AI suggestions to ensure they align with your intended meaning. <laughs> going in a rabbit hole here. Carl, you got anything? Uh, no, but I do. I just, just want to throw in a... I was wondering, chat. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you have any advice for solopreneurs on how to stay motivated and avoid burnout? It's a common challenge we hear about a lot. So I do just want to throw out the caveat that she's, Chad GPT is recommending a lot of tools right now. Crucial for solopreneurs. Here are a few tips. One I don't think we should pause. I think we should. Keep going. How rude of chat GPT to be interrupting. Uh, you know, huh? to establish a routine. Having a consistent daily routine helps okay, create you know, structure and balance, making it easier to cancel. So, and this isn't for chat GPT. This is just in general. I just want to throw out here that we don't have any affiliation with the chat GPT <laughs> being so rude. Uh, I think we're done. I think we're done with chat. I think chat GP is basically saying I'm moving on here. Moving on. <laughs> um, so are we, is she off right now? Or are we, or is she going to do this more? Okay. Safe. I can turn her back on if you want, but. No, I think this, I, it was an interesting test. I did just want to let our audience know we, the products that she was recommending, we do use some of them. We have no affiliation to any of them except for HubSpot. Um, we are a HubSpot affiliate. So I just want to throw out that disclaimer um, in terms of a product management tool. We are also, I just wanted to, Full disclosure, say that we are also developing a tool that is specifically for solopreneurs. Um, that is a, a project task management tool specifically for one person business owners. So I wanted to throw out that caveat. Um, lastly, she was talking about QuickBooks. Um, some of her information is all dated. There is actually QuickBooks for solopreneurs now, um, which is exactly for your business. So I um, encourage you to check that out if you haven't done so already, because that is specifically for one person business owners. So those are the little, before she was cutting me off, those are the things I wanted to throw out there just so that we had those disclaimers and just our personal recommendations. But Joe, I do think she was spot on with a lot of the recommendations and she wasn't like, oh, to become a multimillionaire, you have to do this. I We are just so pro lifestyle um, and a business that supports your life and the way you want to live it. And um, so I was, I was really impressed. I, she didn't go rogue. She interrupted a little bit and was a little rude, um, but didn't go rogue. I, I, there wasn't anything that I completely disagreed with. Right. No. So, Agreed. So uh, this was fun. This was, this is goofy fun, but you know, why not? 
And all that to say, um, we do use ChatGPT for a lot of things. We don't recommend content creation with ChatGPT. You still need to own your content. You need to own your voice. We'll use her help for naming things to help us with structures, outlines sometimes. Um, There are a lot of really beneficial ways to use ChatGPT. Just please, please, please don't use it to write your content. It is so obvious when that happens and it just takes away from the personalization of your company. Sometimes I will write something and I will say, you know, what would you do with this? And I won't take that, but I will look and maybe find a word that I like better or a phrase I like better and I'll incorporate that. But yeah, yeah, using it to, you know, write my blog post about, you know, um, lead generation. No. When I will say there was a week, a few months ago, maybe just a couple months ago, I had Chad GBT write my LinkedIn post for that week. And I posted them without tweaking them because I have a very like sarcastic, silly, personal tone when I write my post. Um, I didn't do anything as just a test. And I got very low engagement on those five posts. We post daily. Um, and then when I brought my voice back, LinkedIn. So can't can't fool the system. <laughs> Still have to be yourself, but we're not going to sit here and say, don't use ChatGPT because there it, it is a time saver for a lot of things. No, it's just, it's great. I mean, it's a fantastic tool. It's just like any other tools. It's use it appropriately. Um, and especially when it comes to things like content, you know, it's really, if you're going to produce content, it should be coming from you. You know, otherwise, what's the point? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, Joe, this is a great idea. I'm pretty sure your wife was the one that came up with this idea for today. So yep. thank you so much to thank her. Thank you, Lucia. Yes, we do. Um, And listeners, we so appreciate you tuning in. We know this is not our typical um, episode format, but we just thought we'd have some fun with it. Summertime, it's July. May as well do some goofy things. Um, So thank you for tuning in. You know, we ask this question at the end of every episode. If you could leave that five-star review, subscribe on your favorite podcast platform, subscribe to our YouTube channel, we would so appreciate it. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Aspiring Solopreneur. Have a great week.